When it comes to package and plugin development, Sublime comes pre-installed with all the tools you need to create and trace development of your package resources and when the inevitable occurs, debug to see what exactly has gone wrong. These are great things to have at your disposal, whether you're an aspiring package and plugin author or you're just a regular Sublime Text user who's trying to diagnose when something has gone horribly wrong. And that's why in this week's Plugin 101, we're going to discuss tools of the trade. <music> Hello, fellas of Blind Picks for next. Odat Nerd here, and welcome to this week's Plugin 101, where we're going to be covering tools of the trade. Now, what do we mean by that? You may have used other software in the past that can be augmented by way of packages, plugins, and other extension things. And sometimes software that does that requires you to install external development tools, external software development kits, and otherwise set up an environment that allows you to work with and create packages and plugins for that software. And as we said in the previous video, Sublime doesn't work that way. It comes out of the box, shipped with everything you need in order to use it and to create packages for it as well. And there's a, a couple of key aspects of that that we're going to cover here in today's video. This is information that will be useful to you if you want to be a package and plugin author. And it's also useful to you if you're not planning on being a package developer, but you're just a Sublime Text user. Because remember, anything you do in Sublime is probably using a package, either one of the ones that you have your, installed yourself using package control or one that ships with Sublime, like the default package that provides a lot of functionality. So having this sort of information at our disposal is key in order to get the most out of Sublime Text. And the first thing we're going to talk about here is the Sublime Text console, which is available by going to the view menu and choosing the show console item, or as as we can see here, it's also bound to the key binding control backtick. That's the same across Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. And from this point forward, whenever we go into the console, we're just going to be using that key binding because that makes life so much easier. Now, what this does is open a panel at the bottom of the window. This is like a standard panel. You can size it up or down as appropriate to see as little or as much of it as you would like. And the console has two important areas. The top larger area is an output area. This is a place where the core of Sublime Text and plugins and the plugin host, the thing that in Sublime that actually executes plugins, can use to output information uh, on their status. And the bottom part is an input widget. But let's go ahead and go through this. Now, this upper area here, as I said, is an output area. And if we were to scroll this all the way up to the top, we can see that this starts with Sublime starting up. It's got important information like what version we are running, what operating system, whether it's a stable build or a development build, various important package and uh, state folders. And then we see it loading plugins. And we can see a lot of these are plugins that are coming from the default package. That's one of the ones that shifts with Sublime Text. This is why it's important to know this stuff. Even when you're not using third-party packages, you're still using plugins. So it's good to know a little bit about how to diagnose them. And eventually, after all plugins are loaded, we see a message that says plugins loaded, and then Sublime is ready to go. Now, in this case, the override audit package and the hyperhelp package, both of which are packages that I'm an author of, have also displayed their own information here in the console as well. So, so this is an area for plugins and Sublime Text to give you diagnostic information. This thin area at the bottom of this uh, console is an input area that allows you to send input directly into the Python interpreter that's executing plugins. And remember, this is a completely separate and divorced uh, Python environment that ships directly with Sublime Text. It's embedded in the Sublime Text binary. So even if you don't have Python installed, this is still available. And if you do have Python installed, this is still using the one that's built into Sublime Text. Sublime doesn't care if you have external Python installed at all. And because this is an internal uh, Python thing. We can type Python code in here, like typing uh, 1 plus 1 to see that the answer to that is 2. We can type arbitrary Python code in here, like import sys and sys.version in order to see the version of Python that the input widget is using, which as we can see here is version 3.3.6. Now, as a pro tip, this is currently a stable build of Sublime Text 3. There are new versions of Sublime Text on the horizon. One of the things that those versions of Sublime Text bring is a newer version of Python, specifically version 3.8.2 as of right now, but it's not officially released yet. And in that case, there are not one, but two different versions of Python that are built into uh, Sublime, and Sublime will use the older version for older packages, and newer packages can use the newer ones. So if we were to open the context menu in one of those newer builds on the input widget, 
then there would be an item in here that allows you to switch which one of the Python hosts the input is going into. Uh, that's not something we're going to see right now because those versions of Python and Sublime Text aren't released officially yet. But if you happen to be using one of those builds, those will be available to you. And if you're viewing this from the mysterious feature after those builds are released, hey, you can be uh, less confused about why when you do this, you see version 3.8 and not version 3.2. Now, this is important for us because it's giving us an introspection into the internals of Sublime. So anytime something doesn't seem to be going right with the package or otherwise, good thing to do is jump into the console and look and see if there's a message here that tells you if something has gone wrong or what that something might be because problems do occur. And if you ask for help from the Sublime Text developers or from a package author or even in the forum or on Stack Overflow, Usually someone's going to ask you, have you checked the Sublime Text console? That's what they mean by that. But there's a lot more that we can do with just this. And in order to do that, we're going to go up to the Tools menu and choose Developer New Plugin. This gets Sublime to open a stub Python file. There's nothing special about this except that it has put this uh, sample in here for us. It set the syntax to be Python. And when I try to save the file, it's going to save it into my user folder, which is where we want this to be. Now. I'm going to go ahead and just save this. We're going to gloss over what this is actually doing because that's for down the line. For right now, we're worried about tools inside of Sublime Text. And when I hit save, it's going to open the standard uh, operating system dialog box. I'm going to save this file as sample.py like so. I have a version of that from uh, a previous time. Now, remember, in order to be considered a plugin, a Python file has to be in the root of a package and not inside of a subdirectory. And it has to have an extension of .py. But that's stuff we're going to talk about uh, in an upcoming video. So I'm going to go ahead and save I want to replace that and we have saved this in. Now, if I was to come back to the console here, we can see a line that says reloading plugin user.sample. That's Sublime's way of saying that it found a plugin or it has noticed the plugin has changed, so it has reloaded it. And every time I save the file, that is immediately reloaded. So, do I is there a compile step or some sort of setup necessary in order to make a plugin active? No, just put it in place and Sublime will see it. And if you were to break your plugin code, uh, for example, if we came back over here and accidentally had this uh, line or this uh, double quote, sorry, I'm missing. When we save the file, we get a Python error. Now, this is nothing specific to Sublime Text at all, except that it's using a version of Python that's built into Sublime. This is a standard Python error saying that while it was looking for the uh, end of a string literal, it found the end of the line, and thus this code is broken. So, uh, this is handy when you're working with plugins to see if you've made some sort of syntactical error inside of your code that will stop it from compiling uh, at all. Other things we can do is this. Now, if I save this, the code still compiles properly, but what we might want to do is actually execute a command, and we're going to say view.run command example. And if you're not familiar with this, well, don't worry about that because this uh, bit, what the view is and all of those sorts of things, and the what plugins can and can't do, that's coming in an upcoming video in the series. But I'm going to do this. This is going to execute or attempt to execute the command named example, which is the one that this plugin is defining, which based on the code should probably insert the text hello world up at the start of the buffer. But when I choose it, I get an error and it's telling me that example command object has no attribute VIE. Now again, if you're not a Python developer, this may not mean as much to you. If you are a Python developer, then you know exactly what's wrong and really you know what's wrong because you saw me break the code. Uh, but this points out that even if there's not a syntax problem with your code, if there's a semantic problem, if there's something wrong with the actual logic of it, those will be caught and displayed here as well. This is why you should jump here uh, if you do something and it doesn't seem to work. So I can do that. We can see it saying it reloaded the plugin. The syntax of the file is still correct. And I can use the command history to bring that up. And now it has executed this command. So using the console, we can see output from plugins and Sublime Text, including error messages when our code is broken and when our code is syntactically broken such that it doesn't actually compile. We can also use the uh, console down here to run arbitrary commands and plugin code and Python code in general, which allows you to interface with things, makes it a lot easier to test things, to debug things. If you're wanting to do something in Python and you're not 100% sure whether a line is going to do one thing or another, you can drop into the console and do that very thing there if you want to. 
So as we can see, the console is a very important thing to us if we're going to be working with plugins. And even if we're not packaged to plugin authors, it's still going to provide a great insight into why someone else's package might be broken. The other thing that is an important tool for us that we're going to cover in this video is the view package file command. We've seen this many a time in videos on the channel. Choosing it shows you a list of every package file inside of every package that's currently installed inside of Sublime. And you choose one and it will open it up for you to be able to look at. Now, why is this important? Because the Sublime Text API documentation gives us a handy list of every class that we can use and what the methods in those classes are. But if you're not already a package and plugin author, then that may not be as helpful because just because you know the things you can do doesn't mean you necessarily know in what order or which ones to stick together like Lego bricks to get something to do what you want it to do. And in this regard, the greatest uh, learning resource that there is would be to find a plugin or a package or something that does what you're trying to do or something similar to what you're trying to do to see how that other plugin author is doing what they're doing. And uh, at another level, you could use this in order to see exactly how various things are implemented, even if you're curious. For example, if you watch the videos on the other channel, there's a video on the arithmetic command and how cool it is. If we were to use this, we can see exactly how, how the arithmetic command works. It's right here inside of this file. Or um, if we wanted to know how, to how this view package file command even works, we could go to ui.py and see that command is down here at the bottom. It's named view resource command, and it's not really very many lines at all, and this can give you an idea. Now, if you've ever looked at the API documentation for Sublime, you'll know that up near the top, there's a list of plugins that you could look at to see how various things work. This is how you would get at those plugins in order to see how things are ticking behind the scenes. Now, you may be saying, this is great if you happen to know what Python file you're looking in, and certainly the API documentation provides a little bit of information in that regard, but what if you don't know that? And for that, I would say that there's a video uh, on the channel that tells you how to easily determine what file and what package is providing the command that you're interested in looking at the source code of. So I'm just going to drop a link to that down in the description below if you want to figure out how that sort of thing works. I think it's easy to see why the console is an invaluable thing to have at our disposal when we're working inside of Sublime Text, whether you're working on a package and trying to figure out why it's not working or you're just a Sublime Text user using packages and things don't seem to be working the way that you expect, console is a great way to be able to introspect what's going on. And of course, so view package file command allows you to look at the contents of existing packages, which is an invaluable learning resource to see how other people are doing things to learn how they are. This doesn't apply just to plugins because as I said in the previous videos, there are a lot of package resources out there and looking at to all of them can give you an insight into how they're working. That's how I got to the level of Sublime Text package development knowledge that I have right now. There wasn't a lot of documentation available on this. I spent a lot of time looking through and experimenting with other people's code, seeing what they were doing, trying things out for myself. And eventually I got a good handle on how these things work and you can do the same thing as well. Now, in the next video, we're going to be covering uh, more about plugins and in particular, what different parts they have, where they live, what they can do, what they can't do and things of that nature. So maybe Make sure you use the buttons down below to thumb subscribe and share so you don't miss that good business when it arrives. If you have any questions, comments, requests for clarification on the content of this video, leave that down in the comment section below along with any other package development questions you'd like to see answered in this video series. But until the next video in plugin development, this is Odat Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.